UFP, the United Federation of Podcasts. To all who listen to this happy podcast, this is Mickey's Marvels on the United Federation of Podcasts. You can contact the network at contact at UFP Earth on Twitter at UFP Earth and on Facebook. I'm your host, Magic. Join me as always, my good friend Tribs. Tribs, how are you doing? Oh my gosh, I am fantastic. It's a new year. It's 2020. There's a lot of stuff that's coming out. There's a lot of stuff that's already out on Disney Plus. Some stuff to be taken away, but I'm really looking forward to using the app. Just as it's intended to be, and that's just to have fun and reminisce about childhood. Yourself? I'm doing great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to all the stuff that's out on uh, Disney Plus and what's to come and you know whatnot. Although I do have, for the listeners, if you did get the discount deal through Verizon Wireless, where you got the year for free, please check your bills, because they were charging me $100 for that service, yes. So if you if you looked at your bill, it said Disney Plus goes under media and apps, right? But media and apps had a hundred dollar a random hundred dollar charge, while Disney Plus was still free. It's a glitch in their systems. They don't pick up on it if you don't pick up on it. But if you call them, they quickly take it off the bill. Well, that's great to know. I think I'll go ahead and give them a call tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. But yeah, we so we caught that on my end, and I, I was on the phone with them. Um, whatever, it's a third party charge. It's a glitch in their system for whatever reason. For some people, for me, it was a hundred dollar charge. For others, it's a fifty dollar charge. I think it has to go with how many phones you have. It's just banging you for each phone. Um, but like I said, if you call them, they just get rid of it. So no big deal. Whatever. That's not what we're here to talk about, though. <laughs> what are we here to talk about? We are here to talk about something on the Disney Plus app, and what show is that? Mandalorian Episodes 6 and 7. So normally we've been bringing you these episodes one by one, but because the show ended, I don't know, eight years ago, and we're this far behind, we figured we'll give you 6 and 7 as a bundle, and then we're going to record about Episode 8 so that we can just get through this series and move on to other Disney items down the pipeline. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff coming on. It's a new year. It's 2020. Uh We've got a lot of stuff on the docket for at least the next three months. And we're looking forward to your input as to what you want to see. What do you want to see? What do you want to hear? So uh, please leave us a message on the Facebook page. Contact us on Twitter. This this podcast is about the listeners. It's about you guys. So we want to know what you guys want, to, want us to talk about. Join in on the conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. We we love any kind of feedback we can get, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. So with no further ado, let's talk Chapter 6, The Prisoner. What did you enjoy about this episode, Tribs? You know, we talked earlier in the series about where the ups and downs were going to be, and as far as Episode 6, this was a medium up for me, only because it was something new, but not something new as far as a scoundrel or as far as a bounty hunter would be, because we'll get into it in the podcast. There's twists and turns and doubles and, you know, backstabbing so on and so forth. Um, I kind of like the fact that there's the same archetype that's been going on in all star Wars, where you have the scoundrel, you have the heavy, And you have the droid. It seems like the droid's in almost every archetype, as you would in each of the Star Wars series. So this carries along with it. Uh, And it carries along with the next three episodes as well. It's episodes six, seven, and eight. So they they do carry that as an homage uh, as well. Um, Bill Burr, the stand-up comic, he makes his appearance... Uh, as the scoundrel, as the loudmouth of the group, Clancy Brown, well-known actor. You've seen him on many shows. You've heard his voice on many an animated series. He's back, 
And we also have the gentleman from Sons of Anarchy, who plays the friend from The Mandalorian, and also not only was in Sons of Anarchy, he was also in Memento as well. Um, yeah, that and his name is uh, Mark Boone Jr. Mark Boone Jr., excuse me. So, you know, there's a lot of well-known actors. I think the script, I think it was well played out. Um, it was a, it was a cat and mouse game, I think, for the episode. Um, but the, the the intrigue and everything else in the, and what happens in the end, and we'll get to that as well. It's actually a pretty good episode. I, I rate that pretty high. Yeah, I really enjoyed this episode for its cast because who would have thought you're getting Bill Burr in Mandalorian or Mark Boone Jr.? I mean, I I can remember watching Mark Boone Jr. on Memento where he plays a uh, an attendant for a cheesy hotel. Like, he's the guy at the desk, you know? And um, and then then when he popped up on Sons of Anarchy, he was like, oh, it's the guy from Memento. And now it's, oh, it's the guy from Sons of Anarchy, but... Like I said, I remember from from uh, Memento, which if you haven't seen that movie, not that that's a Disney movie, but if you haven't seen that movie, see it. It's phenomenal. I can't tell you anything about it without ruining it, so just see it. And um, But, however, another thing about this episode is it felt very one-offish to me. Yes, I'll agree to that. It was, you know, mostly where we have, it's been the A-plot throughout, you know, uh, and, and a constant arc throughout the uh, throughout the series so far. Here we are, episode sixty. Kind of throw it in a different direction where it's not about Baby Yoda, but it's still about the Mandalorian, and he goes just on a mission uh, as per a friend of right. his. So I can see where the one-off comes in. If you on the surface, this episode is just. If it didn't happen, it wouldn't matter. Like, you could jump from five to seven. You don't really miss much. Because this mission has nothing to do with Yoda. It has nothing to do with what's going on in our universe. What it is good for is it shows you another dimension of Mando. It shows you that at one point, he was a hardened criminal, basically. And that he went along with these outlaws simply for, quote-unquote, target practice. Yeah, it was just basically, uh, I need a place to hide. And uh, he reaches out to Mark Boone Jr., who says, sure, I'll help you out, but in turn, you have to help me. Yeah, well, Mark Boone, and his name is uh, Renzer, I think it is, in the show. But he's kind of a jerk now, isn't he? Because he's like, oh, you know you're always welcome here. And then he's like, and we need this ship, and and Mando's like... uh, the ship was never part of the deal. He goes, well, that's the only reason why I invited you here. Yeah. It's, the ship or nothing. Yeah, and it's such a friend. You know what I mean? It's a, a fair weather friend who, uh, you know, was, I'd love to see you again. Yeah. Hey, listen, I got this thing. You got the, the, the ship that'll get us over there. But it was never part of the deal. And, you know, as a scoundrel would, he would always find a way to get what he wants. And this is exactly what he's doing. And he's setting him up, too. And yeah, closetly setting him up, which we'll talk about towards the in the episode. Uh, which well, no, let's let's just talk about it now. I okay, mean, well, why, he why does... keep pushing it off? No, no, no. But I mean, he 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 does set him up, and uh, to what Mando doesn't know about, but he kind of gets in the in the mix later on and kind of figures it out. Um, it's just it's you know I I really enjoy the. Like you said, it's a one-off. I enjoy the fact that we get the focus away from Baby Yoda and put it more on Mando. Um, this is one of those episodes where it is character specific, and but it, it's to me it was just a giant cat and mouse game. It was who's going to be ahead, and it was it was a big race between the two. Although I thought it was very well done, it was you know everybody got you know Mando gets his turn in the end. Um, but with each of the characters too, he takes them out strategically. What did you think of the fight scenes with each one? Oh, I'm just so done. I'm so done. I'm so done. <laughs> they were good, but come on. He hasn't won a, a fight clean in forever now. Yeah. I, I thought the, when I, when I saw the episode, I thought of you and I'm like, here comes the fight scene. I can't wait to see what magic's got to say about it. it it's just, 
he's supposed to be the greatest ever, and yet he's fighting Hellboy's cousin, right? And he shoots him in the throat. So when he shoots Hellboy's cousin in the throat, he then sets him on fire. That doesn't work. Those uh, what do they call those little rockets? They're oh, the, the 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 stinging bees or something like that. The whistling bees, bees. Yeah, the whistling ones. Well, yeah. So he misses with every one of them. He's getting beat up, and it's only because he finds a door to to hit him with that. And then he doesn't even the first door. Like when he drops the door the first time, it doesn't even work. It's when it closes on him that it, it gets the guy. So like it's just like ugh. You know, um, I mean, it's the fight scenes, the cinematics of the scenes are good. It's just driving me crazy how he just can't walk in on somebody, punch him in the face, and move on. Clothesline, that's it. Yeah, he <laughs> he got pretty well whooped by the by the robots if it wasn't for his armor, right? Right. Uh, you know, it's, I'm still of the opinion, and, you know, love me or hate me, but I'm still of the opinion that there's more to... There's more to strength to a person. There's cleverness. That doesn't, matter. that doesn't matter. Because here's the deal. He'd be dead now. Yeah. If he lost this often, he'd be dead now. <laughs> he wouldn't have gotten this far. Yes. Does he have to be more than just strong? Of course. But even a really smart guy stops getting punched in the face at some point. That is, well, you learn to block, of well, course. No, you no, I mean? you apparently don't. <laughs> You just get better armor and hope that it survives. This is the way. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very frustrating at this point. It, it is. I mean, I can understand your point. Um, but Especially, me, again, since they make them out to be the greatest fighters ever. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> the greatest fighters ever. <laughs> I, it's... Yeah, you know, I, I really think there's. I, I can understand your point. It, there's got to be a balance between the two. I think, um, and it just seems that he's more of the brain than the might because he's relying on the armor and the weapons to do so. He's not too bright. Then he's getting shot constantly. Uh, yeah, I. So, so I I disagree. I don't think he's that much of the brain. <laughs> if I was so smart, I'd stop getting shot at. <laughs> Okay, I I got, I got you. <laughs> if if he's getting hit, yeah. he's failing on all levels. No, In I, fact, I think it proves exactly the opposite of your point that literally the strength of his armor is what saved him so far. Well, the armor is the best thing he's got on. But he didn't make it. No, he didn't. So, <laughs> I mean, the episode for what it is, it's a one-off. It's a. No, it's a great episode. It's, it's a it, yeah, it's it's a derivative from what we've been used to for the last five. Um, you know, yeah, we have the Star Wars Royal Rumble with one on seven, or whatever the case may be. Even though there's five there, I <laughs> what? And they just Bill Burr's like, eh, let him have it. Yeah, exactly. But, <sighs> Thanks, but I, Bill. But you know, I I love the callback to the Twi'lek. You know, the, the Twi'lek race was someone we don't get to see very much of. We know that they were slaves in, in, the, in the movies, of course. But now this Twi'lek comes out and both the brother and sister come out to be uh, the bad habits. You know, the, the bad people and all this other thing. So, Well, the brother's pretty evil. Yeah, as is the, like, as well, is what the about sister. Her? Right, as is the sister, but the brother is a little more evil because the brother is looking out for himself as well. He'll let his sister die. Yeah, uh, that's you know, that's something you don't see in that race that, that we know of. You know, they were always the slaves. Or they were uh, they were Jedi uh, Jedi Padawans in Clone Wars. Um, yes. But all the same, I think each of the characters that were played that were that were portrayed were actually portrayed pretty well given the archetype that they were supposed to be. Oh yeah. I think it was acted well. I think the storyline was well, and we keep saying one off and I agree. You could jump from one to the other, but I do think you get a lot of character development in this episode where you learn about Mando's past. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, you learn how far he's come because when they do finally find out that there is a living person on the ship, Mando very quickly puts a gun in Bill Burr's face and tells him, we're not killing anyone here. Right. And, and that's, like you said, it's, it's character.